Well, I'm your host, Peter Komandowski, and welcome to Surviving Bad, where we explore stories of survival, hope, and inspiration. Today, we're talking about climate change and a little bit about social anxiety. Worldwide, a generation of youth is thinking about climate change. Teens consider it their number one concern for the future. Now, it can be confusing and polarizing, in some ways a dividing line between science and politics and not a very friendly one. It's a challenging topic, and we've invited a top scientist to talk about it. Dr. Kelvin Rodolfo, Professor of Earth and Environmental Science at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Kelvin, welcome to the show. Um, I'm a, a fortunate person that have had many, many years of influence of your teachings. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're here today. Okay, very nice to talk to you again, Peter. It's been a long time. I uh, started as a professor at the uh, University of Illinois at Chicago back in 1966. In the second year of existence of that now venerable campus, and uh, I've been uh, a geologist and environmental science scientist ever since. Um, climate change is a topic very close to my heart, and I'm really glad to uh, to share my thoughts about it. Perhaps the first thing I should say is that uh, one of the one of the biggest problems with uh, climate change is people don't realize that our planet is literally a living planet and that climate change is a response of the living climate to abuses that we are inflicting on it. And we can talk about that in more detail as we go on. Now we have a lot of, of kids today and I was shocked when I read that globally, the number one concern of teens and young adults is global climate change and the future of the earth. Now that makes a lot of sense if we think about the earth being a system that we need to be healthy to support humans. Mm -hmm. um, in your discussion, and I looked at one of your uh, PowerPoints, when we look at the history of the earth and how many years it's been here, human participation has been very, very short amount of time overall. And the earth may not have our best interests at heart if we don't take care of it. How would you look at that? Yeah, well, uh, the Earth is about four and a half billion years old, and humanity has been around for like two million years. So if we pretend that the Earth were 24 hours old, we've been here for the last 22 seconds. But uh, the impact that we, we have inflicted on the planet far outweighs that very short period of time, and it, it promises to get worse. I'm really pleased that it's the number one concern of young people. Because if anybody is going to change this, it's going to be the young. Uh, the, 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 the children who, uh, who devote their lives to fighting this, this, uh, this, this, this climate change, they need to do it because after all, they're going to be the ones, they and their children and grandchildren are going to be the ones that are, are going to be impacted most. Now, is this a classic battle? I mean, we have so many people saying that, oh, the earth changes naturally anyway. And it's true. There have been many, many global changes that we sometimes consider catastrophic, but they happen and they're real. Um, but but this, this is a case where we actually have measured research that shows that human impact on the earth has made these dramatic changes. It's not been a natural occurrence, right? Yeah, it, oh, yeah that's absolutely right. Uh, we, we uh, geologists call the present uh, geological epoch the Anthropocene, meaning the the epoch uh, during which the the, the most uh, the most significant uh, player has been uh, humanity itself. And uh, they say that uh, in a few million years, um, uh, should uh, people survive, and geologists uh, are still around. Uh, we will say the, uh, the Anthropocene strata are the ones that, uh, that have uh, Coca-Cola bottles uh, tapped by a radioactive layer. So when people go out and pick up rocks, uh, we're, uh, what we're going to leave behind is a bunch of garbage. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's a shame. That's fascinating. So, so when you, now you've been teaching geology for a long time, and your teaching in geology is really based on looking at the earth as this sort of homeostatic steady state system that can in many ways heal itself and care for itself. Is there reason to believe that even with our effort that the earth can still care for itself and survive with no problem? Oh, yes. 
uh, when people talk about we are destroying the earth, we are not. You can't destroy the earth. And uh, life on earth is, uh, is uh, exceedingly flexible. Uh, keep in mind that uh, 60 million years ago, a huge asteroid hit the earth and, uh, and wiped out most of the living, living beings. But, uh, but there were survivors, and uh, those survivors included little puny uh, mammals at the time of the dinosaurs, chased around by dinosaurs, they, but they survived, and, uh, and they took over the earth uh, and evolved, and uh, we wound up uh, with, with our own species, uh, perhaps the most destructive that's ever come, on, come along. If we, uh, we wipe ourselves out, there will be survivors. Uh, Earth is just too, too, Earth and life are just too flexible for us to destroy it. And I like to think that perhaps the survivor will be uh, the, um, oh, uh, what, what, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I, my, I just had, did a bit of brain freeze. Uh, the survivor will be the raccoon because it has all the prerequisites. It has binocular vision, like we do. It has an opposable thumb, which, which makes us very grasping. Uh, it has endless curiosity and an infinite capacity for mischief. So that makes it the ideal survivor, the ideal successor to, uh, to humanity. Uh, very cool. Hey, we're going to take a short break. We come back. We're going to continue our conversation and try and make some sense of global climate change with Dr. Kelvin Rodolfo. Stay tuned, you don't want to miss this. The black truck? Hey, Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You wanna see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna call a car. That's a smart idea. So yeah, I know, that's why I did it. Hey, you're gonna get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm gonna get back with Christina? No. Oh, no, no. While a lot is changing in our world, at Mediacom, our focus remains the same. Making sure you have the fastest, most reliable connection possible. During this critical time, we know your needs are changing. You may be working or learning from home, relying on telemedicine, we're finding new ways to keep everyone entertained. If you need more speed, call or go online, and Mediacom will double your speed immediately for as low as $10 more a month for one year. Welcome back to Surviving Bad. We're talking about global climate change with Dr. Kelvin Rodolfo a topic that's been inspiring scientists and researchers for decades. Though not a new topic, it has risen to the top in many people's concerns today, especially our youth. And it's become a cause celebrate for a new generation of leaders. And it's fascinating to see so many young people using social media really step up and start talking about global climate change and stewardship of the earth. Kelvin, what do you, what do you attribute that phenomena to? Well, uh, climate change uh, is... Uh making things ever worse. And uh, I'm 85 years old. I won't be here much longer. But the kids in grade school and high school are the ones who are going to feel the impact the most. And if anybody is going to make the changes, it's going to be the young people. People like Greta Thunberg of, uh, of Sweden and, and millions of other uh, children all around the world who are deeply committed to try, trying to stop uh, our, our, our attack on, on, on the global environment. Um, if uh, I were to start as a, uh, as a uh, student of the earth and its life as a young person, I would uh, start out by getting away from the classic idea of how earth uh, became uh, or got, uh, got life. The, co the conventional wisdom is that uh, the earth uh, well, I, I call this the, uh, the uh, three bears uh, hypothesis. Uh, they say, just like uh, when, when, uh, uh, when uh, what's her name? 
when uh, Goldilocks broke into the bear's house, right, she uh, the the papa bear's porridge was too hot, the mama bear's porridge was too cold, and the middle bear the, the baby bear's porridge was just right. So the conventional wisdom is that life started on Earth because the temperature was not too hot, not too cold, but just right. And it was like Earth was a was a was a, a plowed and prepared garden, just ready for life to put uh, to put its seeds in and start growing. Well, uh, get rid of that idea because that's far from the truth. In reality. Uh, Earth start, uh, life started on a on a forbiddingly harsh planet, and it was life itself that made the planet into a habitable uh, into a habitable Earth uh, by by changing the environment and maintaining the environment ever since. And I could go on and on about how that how that went, but let's just leave it at that for now. Unless you have questions, Peter. Well, no, but I mean it is it is true that change isn't always bad. Um, you know, it's obviously we're evolving. The world is changing. Uh, whether everything changes through time, yet this idea that that we have all these changes and we've now had this really huge demarcation between the attitudes of youth towards accepting the fact that this is a reasonable attitude that we have some responsibility for global climate change, and the sort of intrinsic leadership of the Earth where you have a few world leaders speaking up, but the real economic leadership, where the money is, um, doesn't want to lose its gravy train, doesn't want to make the changes. And even the changes that are discussed are minute in the context of what we see as change. So it's like David and Goliath. We have these young kids rising up to this. Is it really going to just wait for them to do something? Or can we get, can we see some change happening in society as a whole that might might establish a beachhead, a foothold for change. Well, we're doing our bit right now, just talking about it and hoping that uh, the kids will listen. Uh, the first thing I really do need to say is that the attitude toward the earth is that the earth itself is not alive, but uh, all, we have all these living beings on it. And that's not really not really the case. If you want to, uh, to study, uh, the Earth and its life in an environmental way, you have to take the uh, the 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 Gaian attitude, which says that uh, uh, the entire Earth, from its very inner core all the way out to uh, to its uh, outer atmosphere and all the living beings on its surface, all together constitute a single living organism. Geologists, uh, conventional geologists, fought this idea for a long time because they didn't like the idea of somehow Earth being alive. But all of the ancient myths recognized that. Uh, the Greeks called her Gaia, the Earth goddess. And uh, uh, the science of geology started in Germany. Uh, which they called it Gaiology, which is basically based on the idea of Gaia, the Earth goddess. So even the conventional geologists have, whether they realize it or not, it took off on that. Right now, we, we do believe that, uh, that the Earth is indeed alive and that, uh, and that uh, it has evolved because it has life on it, and that we, which makes it alive. And again, I could go on for hours, but I won't. Well, no, I like that concept. We'll take another short break here. And when we come back, we'll ask Dr. Rodolfo to continue to share some stories about the Earth, Gaia, um, and how the world is changing. See you all after the break. Today, more than ever, you need fast, reliable internet. At Mediacom, we want you to know you can count on us. Our fiber-powered 100% gigabit technology network was built for the future. We have enormous capacity and power and 99.99% .99 network reliability. So even though these are uncertain times, we're prepared. And you can be certain we'll keep your world connected. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. It's here. It's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? 
can't drive. But why? My. Oh. <laughs> Every second, 127 new devices connect to the internet. You can feel it happening. Our digital world expanding with every breath. We're entering a whole new era of connectivity, and Mediacom will be ready to power it. With one of the nation's first 10G platforms, we'll be bringing you more speed, more capacity, more security, and the power to do more than you ever dreamed possible. Welcome back to Surviving Bad. We're talking with Dr. Kelvin Rodolfo about global climate change, life, the universe, and the wisdom of something called Earth. Kelvin, you were sharing a wonderful story about sort of the role of life on the planet Earth. Share it with our viewers, please. Okay. Well, contrary to the, uh, the, the Goldilocks uh, idea that Earth was just right for life, Earth was very harsh and forbidding in the beginning, say three and a half billion years ago. At that time, there was no life, so there was no oxygen in the atmosphere, because the only thing that puts oxygen in the atmosphere are plants or, and, and uh, photosynthesizing or, uh, oceanic organisms. So the very first uh, organisms that came along had to develop underneath a layer of ocean water that could, that could uh, intercept this vicious ultraviolet uh, rays coming in from the sun. But there was no ozone layer. To have an ozone layer, you have to have oxygen. There was no oxygen. But so these organisms then began to photosynthesize, uh, to, to live by, uh, by using uh, solar energy uh, to, make, to make their, their, their living, uh, living stuff. And as a byproduct, they put out oxygen. Well, they were too primitive to use oxygen, but fortunately at that time, the ocean had a lot of dissolved iron in it. So all the oxygen these primitive organisms were putting out was absorbed by the oxygen and uh, precipitated on the bottom of the oceans. You see those ancient oceans now in Northern Minnesota, in the, in the, in the uh, in, in the iron ranges, you can see uh, the, the red iron ores in the, in the Mitabi range, is a good example of that. So in any case, the problem was that sooner, very ultimately, uh, all the dissolved iron in the ocean was used up and, ocean, and oxygen began to accumulate both in the ocean and atmosphere. And these poor primitive organisms couldn't handle oxygen, so they died out. Fortunately, because they put out oxygen, uh, the oxygen uh, in the upper atmosphere began to, began to interact with the sun's rays and made the ozone layer, which meant that the, the, the ultraviolet, ultraviolet no longer got to the surface of the earth and it became a, a, a place where other organisms could live. Uh, organisms that not only could withstand oxygen, but actually needed it to survive. And so the idea is these an organism can become so successful that it totally transforms the environment and wipes itself out. Oh, there are remnants. Uh, they look for, uh, for little uh, environments in which there is no oxygen. And so some of these live in your own stomach right now and help your digestion, the so-called anaerobic bacteria. But uh, the, the uh, succeeding organisms not only could survive with oxygen, but actually needed it to survive. And that includes us. So, so in some really strange repetition of history, we could become like that first microorganism that synthesized oxygen, created oxygen. Um, if we destroy the ozone layer, we would again change that environment, but it's no guarantee humans would be very much survivable. Well, fortunately, life is adaptable enough so that even if we're wiped out, there will be successors who will be able to handle it. And, uh, and more than likely, they, they would have to re restore the oxygen and therefore the ozone layer. And that would happen. I have every faith. We may be long gone, but life will go on. Well, and that's the thing is, do you believe that humans have within their own power 
the ability to change enough to to salvage the earth, the environment for humankind? Uh, I have faith in the young of the earth and in, in young human beings. Uh, if because uh, humanity is a is a unique a unique species with endlessly adaptable, and with with the passion and vigor of youth that understands the problem and and need and know that they in order to survive they have to fight it. We have. The young are our last hope. On that note, we're going to take a short break. Um, and then afterwards, invite Kelvin to share some final comments and insights. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss this. See you all after the break. Devices connect to the internet. You can feel it happening. Our digital world expanding with every breath. We're entering a whole new era of connectivity, and Mediacom will be ready to power it. With one of the nation's first 10G platforms, we'll be bringing you more speed, more capacity, more security, and the power to do more than you ever dreamed possible. Today, more than ever, you need fast, reliable internet. At Mediacom, we want you to know you can count on us. Our fiber-powered 100% gigabit technology network was built for the future. We have enormous capacity and power and 99.99% .99 network reliability. So even though these are uncertain times, we're prepared. And you can be certain we'll keep your world connected. advice on managing your anxiety or tools to help you stay grounded, Coping 19 provides a range of resources and self-care tips to help you cope with this pandemic. We can help. Find the resources that work best for you at coping-19.org. Welcome back. Today on Surviving Bad, we're talking about global climate change and an emerging generation of leaders that have chosen to make a difference in the health, welfare, and wellness of planet Earth, our home. Let's see what additional light Dr. Adolfo has to share on this issue. Okay, well, um, life on Earth uh, has two components. The plants that make, uh, that make uh, uh, the stuffs that we eat and, and put out oxygen as a byproduct, and the animals that use the oxygen and eat the plant stuff to, uh, to run their own lives. So it's like, it's a, like a closed loop. The, uh, the photosynthesizers, the plants that make oxygen and say uh, carbohydrates, who, so they produce it. And then animals take the carbohydrates and burn it with oxygen to make carbon dioxide. And the carbon dioxide is used by plants so you have a, an endless loop. The Persians uh, you, uh, used to talk about a, uh, an ancient uh, 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 super being they called Ouroboros, which is a snake that ate its own tail. So you can think of life as a snake that eats its own tail. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Now, the, the problem, so the problem is that that loop is almost complete, but there's a little leakage because some of the plant stuff fall down to the bottom of the ocean and accumulate as oil or gas and on land as, as coal. And that's good because uh, that takes carbon dioxide out of the air and keeps the, uh, keeps the, the greenhouse effect down by, by storing it in the rocks. Now, the big problem is that we as a species come along and we take the coal and we burn it and we take the oil and we burn it and we take the natural gas and we burn it. So all of it goes back into the air. And so I like to think that uh, the, uh, what we have here is, uh, there's a, let's just, just talk about oil. Uh, before we started burning the oil, there was about a trillion barrels that were stored in the earth. And that, that was stored over a long time, over, over three and a half billion years. Uh, but now 
every every year we take enough of the oil out of the ground that it took nine uh, that took nine million years to store. Now let, let's it. look at this. So we're using in one year uh, this species called humans, and we know we waste a lot of it, and we use a lot of it for stuff we don't really need. Mm -hmm. In one year, we use what it took the Earth nine million years to make. Yes, that's exactly right. That's mind blowing. And so that's undoing uh, the living Earth's work of nine million years. In just one year, we undo the work that uh, the work that Earth took nine million years to to uh, uh, to make, and that's just not tenable. You cannot keep doing that. That is why the carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere keep rising, and the and the greenhouse effect keeps getting worse, and the planet keeps uh, keeps getting hotter and hotter. This is the thing that we have to stop. The other thing we do is we deforest. The biggest absorber of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere are forests. Well, what do we do? We take forests and we cut them down, and we burn the wood, or we allow it to rot which means that not only are we putting more carbon dioxide into the air, we are taking away the biggest thing that can absorb carbon dioxide out of the air. Out of the air. So the earth is hit in two ways. And it just has to stop. Okay, let's take our last minute here as precious time. What advice would you give to young kids today, middle school, high school that are listening to this show? You know, what, what would you tell them? Uh, be aware of what's going on. And uh, I would hope that many of you would become scientists because it is only with science that we can solve these problems. Science and technology can solve the problem. So let's say, if you're afraid of math, get over that fear, you're gonna need it. You're just gonna need it. Uh, you'll find if you actually get into your arithmetic and your mathematics that there is actually beauty in it. It may take a while for you to discover, but it's there. And when it when it when you find it, it will empower you. Thank you so very much, Dr. Rodolfo, for joining us. I will tell everybody watching that we're going to have a special evening session where Dr. Rodolfo can spend the better part of an hour with a PowerPoint talking about global climate change. You'll all get an invitation to that on our website. We thank you all for joining us today. Check out our website, ahealthyiowa.org and keep your eye on Mediacom MC22 for our next episode of Surviving Dad, where we explore stories of survival, hope, and inspiration on Mediacom MC22, your local programming leader.